Well, this time of year, I get more questions about overwintering moth cocoons and pupae than anything else. So if you would like to see a visual walkthrough of how I handle this, keep watching. This is my dedicated pupa and cocoon refrigerator. It is a simple dorm room type that I keep in my garage. I like to have a dedicated refrigerator for this purpose so I can set the temperature specifically in the range I prefer. Here you can see I keep a hygrometer thermometer inside as well as an open tray of water to keep humidity up as refrigerators are notoriously dry. I don't want my cocoons or pupae to get too close to freezing so I prefer to keep them in the low to mid 40s. In these plastic boxes, I keep my earth pupators, who would normally be underground for the winter, and any cocooning species that I don't want to leave outside or that would get too cold outside in my area. So let's take a look at how I keep these species alive and happy for the winter. You can use pretty much any plastic container without holes for storage, as holes would allow the moisture inside to escape, and the main cause of winter failure is due to drying out or desiccation. Inside, I also keep small individual hygrometers so I can check the humidity levels without opening the boxes, but I do open them once a month to let in fresh air and to make sure no mold is present. In this box are Citheronia regalis, or regal moth pupae. I do like to roll them up loosely in tissue paper to give them a bit of insulation from the cold air and each other, and this has worked well for me in the past and makes it easy to see if mold is present as the tissue will look gray or brown. When first storing them, I also add a single drop of water before closing the containers and try to keep the humidity at the very minimum at 50%. 65% is even better. I like to cover them with a bit of bubble wrap so they don't move around too much and back in the fridge they go. Now here I have some cocoons, which normally I would keep outdoors, but these have all been cut open. Once the cocoon is opened, it will no longer protect the pupa inside from harsh outdoor weather. So these I'm handling similarly by wrapping them first in paper towel, just like the pupae with no cocoon, so that it has added protection. These moths are overwintering for a second year and the cocoons are only open to check if they were still alive. It is always best to keep the cocoon intact if at all possible as it provides the best protection. But if you have to check, making the smallest possible cut and being able to put them back into the cocoon is ideal as this is nature's ideal protection. I generally won't take any of my pupae or cocoons out of cold storage until there are at least leaf buds on the trees in spring as you wouldn't want them to emerge too early and have no food for the next generation. Once removed from the cold and warmed up, you can typically expect emergence anywhere from two weeks to a month. So now let's switch gears and look at some pupae that do not need refrigeration. These are Citheronia splendens, a large, beautiful moth found in Mexico and Arizona. They do not need to experience very cold weather, but just cool temperatures between 50 and 60 degrees. So these I will keep out in my garage, which happens to stay in that temperature range. You can see the tiny wadded up piece of paper towel I have in there as well. I will add a few drops of water to that occasionally when humidity in the container drops. They sit on soft sphagnum moss with their own hygrometer thermometer, so I can easily check on them. If humidity gets too high, I will remove the cover for a while to allow it to dry out a bit and then cover them again. Now let's take a look at some native species that can spend the winter outdoors exposed to the elements. These boxes I have hung up to keep them off the ground where mice or other creatures might find them interesting. And if you're handy, you can make them yourself with just wood stakes, quarter inch hardware cloth and window screen. That is basically all that is necessary to make a safe outdoor enclosure. The main thing is to keep them protected from birds and rodents, which the window screen and hardware cloth are pretty good at. You also would not want snow piling up in there if you live in an area that gets snow, so a roof of sorts usually helps with that if you don't have a protected area with an overhang. Inside this box are Cecropia moth cocoons, which are native in my area and can handle all the cold and bad weather thrown at them. Since outdoor air is naturally humid, there is no need to monitor the humidity, and it is a much easier process in general. I like to keep the cocoons off the floor, so I've clipped them onto branches still attached to the sticks they wove their cocoons on. Cecropia will likely not emerge in my area until mid-June, so they have a while to go. I do have one that made his cocoon on the side of a mesh enclosure, so he now sits alone on a little platform I made him. You would not want them sitting in water at any point, so elevation or drainage is important. And lastly, their next door neighbor are some butterflies. These are black swallowtail chrysalises. And again, you can see they're elevated and off the floor. 
Most of them were put in here as caterpillars when they started wandering, and they chose a spot in here to form their chrysalis. One of the greatest benefits of keeping them outdoors is that being exposed to natural daylight and temperatures will allow them to emerge at the right time of year to find wild mates without having to worry about when to warm them up in spring. So I hope this has been helpful for those that live in areas like myself where there is a long winter requiring special care to protect your moths and butterflies through to spring. And as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will try to respond to as many as I can.